Hey everyone, this is going to be your final video. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the simple, not simple stuff, but show you some quick stuff. I don't want to forget how to draw in, I don't want to forget to draw in lips for you, so I'll draw in lips first. Your lips command is over here. And uh, the reason I had trouble with it before is because it's always at the bottom of the screen here, it says specify axis and point of your lips. The way to draw this is to do center. So uh, if I, again, I'll just get out of that. If I just click ellipse, and I haven't clicked anything yet, I hit C for center and hit enter. Now I'm going to be drawing things from the center of the ellipse, as you see from my instructions. If I want this thing to be 18 inches wide and 12 inches uh, high, uh, I'm drawing from the center. So I draw half those numbers. So if I go 9 to the right, and if I go up 6, which is half of 12, it'll look like this. So the dimensions of this thing is now 18 inches wide and 12 inches high. So I'll just do that again. I'm going to get off that, that layer. It's a goofy layer. As you can tell, I'm not too... I don't do much layering. I do all my match properties at the end. Um, I don't layer as I go. So if I want to specify the endpoint of ellipse, I don't want to do that again. Again, I want to hit C for enter. Uh, and then I want it to be 18 inches by 12 inches. So I'll go, since I'm drawing from the center, I want to go, oh, this is, I'm going to type in the radius right now. So half of 18 is 9. Hit enter. And then go up and half of 12 is 6. And that's, uh, that's how you draw your ellipses. If you want to detect the center of your ellipses or anything like that, you can go and type in O snap. Oh snap. And if you click on center, it will then detect the center of the ellipse. So if you need to move this thing or something, it'll find the center of it for you, and then you can draw a line out like that. So that's how you're drawing your ellipse. The thing I want to focus on mostly today, though, is drawing a block. Um, we'll draw some kind of block. So I'm just going to draw a couple things. Right now I'm on the layer deck. So uh, that's something important to notice that I'm on the wrong layer right now, because you'll probably end up doing this too. Let's pretend I want to make this thing into a block. What I do is I type in the word block and I can give it a name. So I'll call it like a square circle, like a wrestling ring, and then go and select the objects and hit enter. So to select the objects, I selected this, and then I windowed this thing. The name of it is gonna be square circle, and I hit okay. So now this thing is a block. So I, I can copy this thing a whole bunch of times, copy it around a few times, perfect. So now I've got the, all these blocks. Um, but they're on the layer deck. So to use my, if I wanted to put on a different layer, say for fun, I wanted to put on the layer other. Uh, um, in your real project, you want to put it on a layer called fixtures. Let's put it on fixtures. Let's pretend this thing is a fixture. Uh, if I draw a line and use match properties and select these blocks, uh, and then I go click on them, it will be on the layer fixtures. But it didn't turn, it didn't change color, it didn't change from black. That's because I drew it on the wrong layer in the first place. So now if I want to go edit this block, if I want to add the size of it, or if I want to edit the layer it's on, I have to double click on it. What that will do is it'll take me into a block definition. And it says, do you want to do square circle? Yes, I do. So I hit OK. Now I'm in a separate drawing. So it's opened a different drawing right now. Now I'm inside this block, and these things are now individual lines again, or individual pieces, okay? So if I just select them, go up to my layer and put them on fixtures. I think it's fixtures, right? And then hit close block editor. Oh, I'm going to cancel. I don't want to save those changes yet. So I've now changed this to, the, to fixtures, but now I can also edit this block. So say I want to drag that corner like this and drag that corner like that. That's kind of neat. Uh, I hit close block editor. Do you want to save the changes? Yes, I do. So what I do is I, I change it to the fixtures layer, and I also moved it around a little bit. I save the changes, and it makes it the same changes to all my blocks. So now not only is this uh, block on the fixtures layer, it's also the same color as the fixtures. So I sort of changed it in two, in two spots which you are going to have to do on the exam. So again, if I want if I want to insert this thing somewhere, I just go insert block, go find the name of it. So you should only have a few here. I got way too many, but if you can find one called square circle, there it is. Hit OK. Uh, it's now asking me specify an insertion point. So I'll just click here. But for some reason, it keeps inserting it way out in the boonies. I haven't figured that out yet, but I'm sure you guys will figure it out. If you want to get to the edge of your drawing, double click on your roller ball. So we double click on that it'll go to the edges of your drawing. So again, if I insert, so I'm going to insert a different block here. Well, maybe we'll insert the stove. See where that inserts. That actually inserts right at the point where I want it to, but I haven't showed you how to do that yet. I haven't, I actually forget how to do it. I'll try and figure it out for you and maybe tell you on Friday. But that's how you, uh, that's how you make blocks and you can edit blocks and that's how you put blocks on the right layer. But also how you insert blocks. Insert block, using that term. One more thing I wanted to do, I think, uh, P edit and explode. That's a good one. So if I have, if I draw a bunch of lines, yo, if I draw a bunch of lines like this, and right now they're all individual lines. 
Right now they're all a series of individual lines. And say this is the outside of my house and I want to offset it. Instead of offsetting each one individually, I can make these into polyline. So I can type in P edit. What that's asking me to do here is ask me to select a polyline. So I select this line and says, well, it's not a polyline, but do you want to turn it into one? And yes is the default. So I just hit yes. I hit enter for Y. And then it says enter an option. And I'm going to do J for join. So I hit J, hit enter. And then I select all these lines. What's that done now? And then hit enter. What's that? What I've done now is I've made all these into one big polyline. So when I offset them, say six inches to make my walls, it does that. If I offset it outward eight inches to make my footing, it gives me that. So it can offset it as you know, one big unit of what's called a polyline. If I want to then take this back to individual lines, which I might want to do, I can use the explode command right here. So I check explode, select the polyline, it's now taking it back to individual lines, which is pretty cool. Instead of drawing individual lines and then making it the polyline, you can actually just make a polyline. So I select the polyline command and draw 24 feet this way, draw 15 feet this way, and then just finish it off. That thing is now a polyline on its own, and I can explode that too. If I explode and go select it, it takes, breaks it down into individual lines. I think that's about it. Um, if you have any questions on that, be sure to give me a call. So check these out, and uh, you'll be tested on this stuff on Friday. So hopefully things are going well. This might be the last video we do. So I hope these things, I hope these videos really helped you. They were kind of kind of fun to make, and I think it reduced the amount of questions that we had. So I think that's a good thing. So hopefully they, they help you, and uh, look forward to seeing you on Friday. Take care. Goodbye.